guys, it's Basic Sorgonomics. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. And we got somebody in the studio with me. Uh, Matt Carlin's our friend, my friend in the mainstream media. Also helps us out with Wrestling Mayhem Show and IndieWrestling.us. On the writing side of things, you can check out his columns at both of those sites in the pro wrestling realm. It's true. It's true. Well, that was a fun night. So we're just off of, uh, we just, this is just, we're, we're going to, we have an interesting concept on this. We just got off the line with uh, Krista Joseph of Lucha Underground, uh, which is a pro wrestling show that we love. <laughs> Pretty, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, you know, definitely one that, and we do a show that, a midweek war, not so much me, but but Matt, you're, you're a big part of that and the other guys as well. Um, and, and so we had a lot of you guys involved with this interview because I figured you are the experts on this. You've watched every episode. I probably watched like half of the season, um, just because of time restraints, but I've been living vicariously through it. And this is one of those, um, interesting stories where you never know who's listening to your stuff, especially when you're doing something that's like based on, you know, something that's, that's kind of more popularized. And uh, I don't know. Do you want to describe like what happened that kind of like threw us back a little bit? Other than the guy was just completely cool about everything. Um, you know, it was like, yeah. hey, you want to? Like, I think I hit him up on Twitter because he had been retweeting us and kind of corresponding with us because like, we share the account. And I was like, hey, you want to come on the show sometime? And it was a few months ago. I was like, yeah, sure. And, and we had a cancellation. It was a reschedule. But we're good now, right? Um, tell, tell what happened that kind of what, threw everybody back a little bit. Well, you know bit. how all these, th- this is how these things always start, especially when you're dealing in the social media age stories. It always starts with like, um, he'll, you get a retweet, you know? So like the first time we do, we, we, we do our midweek war podcast where we'll review the different wrestling shows that air on Wednesday night. So we were doing the midweek war for Lucha Underground. Um, and you know, you, you blast it out and you try to see, you know, if anyone will, you know, Hopefully people will listen to it. You're hoping. Um, and so the, the first time Krista Joseph retweets us, um, retweets our link to our to our Midway War podcast, we're 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 flying off the walls. Oh my god, he, Krista Joseph, he did you know from Lucha Underground, he retweeted us. This is so awesome. And, 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 and it bumps t- up the numbers on it. I think we did I think we probably did the best. We do our best numbers whenever. Yeah, I mean, it was like it was us. like oh we had four hundred hits this week. This gets like usually not that much, you yeah. know. And, and it was it's like oh hello, and they've been bumped up higher and stuff. And it was usually like whenever that happens. And I think at the time I didn't know he was involved with Lucha Underground, and I knew the name from WWE, of course, and other parts of WWE as we know, as we discussed on the show. Um, so it was like oh okay, you know that, that's cool. Yeah, so this is really cool. He's retweeting us, and it never connected in my brain that. If he's retweeting us, he might actually also be listening to our podcast. That never crossed my mind for some reason. I'm just like, well, he he's retweeting us. What a guy. He's trying to share it with the masses. <laughs> he's surely not <laughs> listening to our podcast, but he's he's retweeting it and I, you know, I certainly appreciate it. Well, the the deal the the, the deal is whenever we do the midweek war, our friend Mad Mike likes to fire it up in a big old growling Vince McMahon voice at the beginning, and I'll just be the like, mid. "Welcome to the Mad Week." None of us can do it, even close yeah. to either of these guys did. I'm, so. I'm kind of, I don't want to, I don't want to do it better than him. That's why I'm not. Oh, know. of course. <laughs> anyway, so we brought Chris to Joseph on the Indie Mayhem show tonight to do the interview, and I swear, sword like <laughs> the fifth word out of his mouth, and he does the Midweek War. Red Wake War, right back at Mad Mike, and like the the glee that came over the studio, all the little tentacles across the internet because you know we're we're hangouts, we're, yeah, we're bi coastal yeah. tonight. Yeah, Texas representing New York, four different Pittsburgh, states California. this evening. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, and like only at that moment was I thinking, oh my god, this guy was listening to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right thankfully we had good things to say about his show i'm for glad the we were nice mind. to him of course he listened to our podcast because all we ever did was gush about how much we love lucha underground and we never <laughs> i don't think we never we never complained about lucha underground it's always like the tiniest little thing because whenever we do the midweek war the gimmick for the midweek war podcast is we have like you got one word to describe this episode you have a good and a bad and something you would change and the bad are always like struggling you're like i don't, I don't know um eh, the mask was on crooked this week for so and so it's always some 
nitpick thing because we can't. We're, we're incapable of disliking Lucha Underground, right, right. especially towards the end of the season. Right. It was just amazing. So, I mean, it's just that point of, um, you know, I, I, you know, we we I've talked on here before and in other cases about uh, you know the numbers don't matter to a certain point because the, the the other example I give often is when we did this this set of interviews. And one guy, you know, spread spread out across the newsletter because there's a great quote, and there was this uh, this program that was going on uh, that, that 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 their interviewee was a part of, and the, the head of the program tweeted out this awesome quote, and it got thousands of hits, right? And then we have our friend up in up in Wexford that did a juicing company and got 40 hits, but got three new clients, and that paid for more than paid for uh, that outreach, right? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. we get. For for just like looking at midweek war, Lucha Underground, we get modest hits. We're not getting insane hits like like I don't a nerdist or, or or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but you never know who's listening, and it might be the guy you're talking about. You know his his product or something like that, or some other connection or some other opportunity. And that's the thing that always surprises me. Like now you you work in like something where thousands millions of people see what you do every day. I, I, they don't see me doing well, it. Well, not you, I but it's a thing hide that behind you do, the, right? I well, mean, yeah, but I and believe me, the consciousness and the knowing of all the people who are watching is always on my mind because you're trying not right. to. Be, because in my mind, in my line of work in TV news, I'm trying, desperately trying not to embarrass the talent who have put their faith in me to not make them look. Who like are the on face on screen? Who are the faces on screen? So I'm like, please don't make these people look like idiots. You know, this, these are our most valuable assets. We have to help these people. Um, you sound like they're like, like these destitute people. We have to make it look good on the TV. We have to do what we can. <laughs> they're virtually helpless, Sorg, and we have to do what we can to help them. But um, to speak to your point um, about you never know who's listening, especially on these uh, podcasts. That's something I've really tried to focus on, just being on the Midweek War and being here on the Mayhem Show every once in a while. I was trying to remind myself to, to not just be some ignorant, you know, fanboy, because there is probably a wrestler listening to this podcast, you know, mm-hmm. there, there probably will be one listening to this one right here, you know, so don't just speak to speak, you know, know what you're saying and have a thought and express it as clearly and as intelligently as you possibly, as you possibly can do your best, you know, you know, because you do not know who's listening. There's, there's failing in public, but there's also performing in public. You know, I mean, there's, you know, when when I turn the camera on, I, I like to, like, I'm on a stage. Just like we know I've done other things on stages in my in my past we won't get into. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that that's very important that you look at it that way. You're not just like, you know, it can be, you know, especially myself doing solo podcasts like this one usually is or me and everybody else is on digital on Hangout. Like it feels very isolating, even though I'm conversing with people. But it's still I look at that lens and I don't try to envision like hundreds of people that I'm looking at the numbers and in, in each one of those person is sitting out there. But, you know, I just like somebody's listening, like one person, two people. And that's important, you know. Or, or actually, with this one, I think of like one or two people I know do respond to me, and I talk to those people, you know. But you never know; you could be talking to somebody else. You could be auditioning for your next job because of what you're doing in this space. And I have done that, you know. And I think that's that's really, you know, something to consider, you know, because you are putting yourself out there. I think you kind of hit on a little point there too when you're talking about. Um connecting with those customers every every viewer every customer that you have is valuable right, right. Um, and that's what and these are know, our viewers I, are our customers in the long run yeah and i mean i was doing some research on a uh, column that didn't end up happening this week because i got distracted by something else but i was doing some research on the young bucks and uh you know they, they toiled for many years um kind of finding their way and trying to figure out how to how to get what they wanted out of professional wrestling and they said they learned the lessons from watching guys like um let's see like someone like cold cabana or someone who these indie veterans who knew how to engage every single fan, every single customer and you make them feel important, no matter how many there are. When you make them feel important, you engage them because you know, those that you have, you can't create any more, you know, in that moment, you can only take the ones you have and treat them right and give them the best that you've got. And then, Carry that on to whoever else comes on the line, right? Certainly, it applies across the board. Matt, 
Matt Carlins, thanks for joining me tonight here and staying up late with me <laughs> on this, time is this podcasting. I don't even want to know. Woo! Uh, yep, yep, it's that time. No so. one gets out of here early. No, never. no, never, never. And it's part of it because of L.A. traffic. We're in Pittsburgh, yet our night was affected by L.A. traffic. Wrap your head around that one, too. Hey, I got caught in Boyle Heights rush hour tonight, honey. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. <laughs> Somebody in a chat that lives in Long Beach uh frequenter of the show uh, uh chat and uh, correspondence uh uh sent us the boyle heights traffic report from <laughs> google it was it was just like this is our world it's uh, it, countrywide and it's tiny so maybe we'll talk to that in our episode thank you so much basic sorgonomics we'll see you guys next time this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatron media dot com.